What I want students to be able to hear is the instruments and things that they're recording in their full range, unadulterated. There's information conveyed in stuff that's not just the notes. The music can change the mood. We have no idea scientifically how this happens. You have to think about what sound is. Like say we just take whatever note it is, C, it doesn't really matter. It hits your eardrum and the eardrum moves back and forth in sympathy with the original sound. If we had a violin, a microphone vibrates and turns it to electricity. Then play it back on a speaker and if everything is correct, it would vibrate the ear exactly the same way as the original violin. That's kind of the theory of the thing. We know from people that tell stories or play music, it's not just notes. If you go ha, huh, that's a note. And then you go low, that's another note. But if you go hello, it conveys information for people. What elements of this thing do we need to capture to create that same emotional feeling that people get? That's the part that we're struggling with in the whole scientific community is trying to figure out how that, when you put it together in a certain way, why does the brain recognize that? The brain's not a tape recorder. It's constructing what we're hearing. When we got into digital, what started to happen was you could start to pigeonhole the notes and their in-between notes now isolated. And you can throw all that stuff away in compression that you don't think is important. You can take noise and subtract it out of a thing and make it quieter. It gives the idea that sound in a recording is more like a garden with trees and grass and flowers and things like that. You can go rip out one of these things, but it's not like that. We're worried that because we don't understand this dimension very well, we're throwing it away.